management accounting. Now, managerial accounting is the practice of identifying, measuring, analyzing, interpreting, and communicating financial information to an organization's management for the pursuit of their set goals. This can be done by the provision of good quality information to help improve the performance of a business. Now, managerial accounting differs from that of financial accounting in the following ways. So first, management accounting operates to suit only internal users, especially the business's management, to assist them in making well-informed business decisions. Whilst financial accounting, on the other hand, is intended for both internal and external users. Secondly, the reports of management accounting are detailed since it is supposed to form the foundation upon which decision-making process of management will be hinged upon. One will be able to tell the performance of a department or unit, the amount of transactions made with each customer, etc. However, reports of financial accounting are presented in summarized forms. You have the total captured as revenue, expenditure, non-current asset, current asset, and what have you. Also, the format of management accounting is not prescribed by any governing body. It can be modified to suit the intended purpose. Therefore, the production manager can request for the number of products manufactured within a particular time frame and may even request it to be presented as a percentage of total input. So it is highly unlikely for two management accounting reports of two different entities to be identical. Financial accounting, however, must strictly follow prescribed principles propounded by some governing bodies. For example, reports by financial accountants must either follow the IFRS, that's the International Financial Reporting Standard, or the United States Generally Accepted Accounting Principle, that is the GAP. So financial accounting reports are uniform across entities. Lastly, management accounting gathers information for forecasting that is for future purpose whilst that of financial accounting does so only to analyze past periods let's take a look at the main processes of management accounting the first is costing now management accounting identifies the financial component necessary to produce an item so when we talk about the component it can be material labor overheads secondly we have planning so it thinks of the steps requisite to achieving an organization's aim. Example, management accounting can help plan how many staff will be required in the marketing department for that particular year. Thirdly, decision making. Management accounting helps choose the best out of the steps in the planning stage to implement to achieve a business's goal. Example, deciding on which market to venture into or what selling price to charge for a new product. Control. This ensures that ongoing activities are implemented as planned and necessary interventions made if it deviates. Example, checking month by month to know if the company is overspending or underspending on wages and salaries. Lastly, performance evaluation. So here, the actual performance is juxtaposed to the budget at the end of a session or at the end of a project to ascertain if things went as planned for future inferences. So for instance, the performance of management or department can be measured against their target. We now move to the different levels of planning. The first we're gonna look at is strategic. So here, the planning supports the vision, the mission and goals of the organization as a whole. It therefore sets high level steps to achieving them. For example, what new offices to open, what new products to launch, what new markets to venture into is decided at this level. It is also long-term in nature. So its implementation spans from three to five years and even more. Thirdly, strategic plans are broad in nature, which needs to be broken down before implementation can be done. Lastly, these plans are produced at the highest level of management, mostly at the board level. The second type of planning is the tactical. It primarily seeks to achieve the strategic plans. 
So it breaks down the strategic plan by setting targets for departments in an organization. Thirdly, it has more detailed step of implementation than the strategic plan has. For example, producing budget for units of the business. Fourthly, it is medium term in nature, up to a year to see its plans to fruition. And lastly, it is set by high to mid level management, usually by the CEOs or the managing directors of the business in addition to the general managing level or the line managers. Lastly, the operational planning. So implementation of the tactical plans are held here. It also breaks down the tactical plan into the minutest detail, such as the material and tools required to implement a job. It is also short term in nature. That is, plans to be achieved within a day or up to a week. And lastly, it is set by lower level management, such as departmental heads with support from their staff. We now take a look at the types of managerial accounting we have. The first is costing. So costing deals with determining the total cost involved in the production of a good or service. Now this is normally done by estimating the expense for material for labor and overheads needed to transfer raw materials or semi-finished goods into finished ones. Secondly, we have cash flow analysis. So this helps in determining the actual inflow and outflow of cash per a business's decision or activities. So cash flow may be used in the decision making process. For example, whether to buy or hire an official vehicle. The two of them can be juxtaposed to determine which one will bring in more inflow and will lead into less outflow. The third is inventory turnover analysis. Inventory turnover is a calculation of how many times a company has sold and replaced inventory in a given time period. So calculating inventory turnover help businesses make better decisions on pricing, on manufacturing, marketing, and purchasing of new inventory. Now this analysis helps a business not to hold excessive amounts of inventory as it has cost implications such as paying for extra storage for the excess goods and tying up of funds which could have been used for better alternate purposes. The fourth is constraint analysis. So every business has constraints or bottlenecks. It can be the demand for its products, availability of raw materials, challenges with suppliers or customers, or seeking of funds. Okay. Knowing one's bottleneck can inform the business to plan and make optimum benefit from the existing situation. Fifth, financial leverage metrics. So this is where a business identifies the right mix of funding, that is equity and debt for its operations. It enables a company to know the right amount of funding to seek from each avenue to invest in its activity to yield maximum returns. Sixth, we are looking at receivables management. So proper account receivable management will help a business identify customers who are worthy of continuous business engagement, who are also worthy of credit facility, and also those whose credit facility should be expanded. Some people, when given 90 days, they abuse it. So they should be reduced to maybe 30 days. Those who have been able to pay up or live up to their expectation can be given more leeway. So this analysis will lead to freeing up of cash held by third parties, that is receivables, thereby increasing the business's working capital. Last but not the least, we're talking about budgeting, trend analysis, and forecasting. So budgets are quantitative expressions of a business's plan. So management accountant utilizes performance reports to note deviations of actual results from budgeted ones and necessary interventions made before it becomes too late. So with trend analysis, a pattern of events can be identified to help a business forecast in the future's events and prepare accordingly.